My name's Adam Hills. Welcome to Spicks and Specs, the music quiz show in which two teams battle it out for music supremacy. Our two team captains each and every week are the salacious Alan Bro and the sagacious Miff Warhurst. <laughs> <laughs> and Alan's first guest tonight is one of Australia's best loved stage performers. She's released three albums, performed in such musicals as Phantom of the Opera, Cats and West Side Story, and is currently appearing in Guys and Dolls. It's a pleasure to welcome to the show Marina Pryor. Alan's second team member is a comedian whose last appearance on this show drew a swathe of requests. We've honoured all of those requests by asking him back on the show but making sure he doesn't sing again. Give it up for Dave Hughes. Miss <laughs> <laughs> first guest tonight is a comedian who once performed in an act dressed as a man while her husband performed in a separate act dressed as a woman. Her home life was like a cross between Mrs Doubtfire and the crying game. Please welcome Denise Scott. <laughs> Thank you. Miff's final guest tonight is an English broadcaster and classical music critic who was a regular guest on a BBC radio music quiz show in the 70s in which two teams battled it out for music supremacy. He's either here to bring some music cred or he's going to sue the pants off us. Please welcome John Amos. <laughs> now, John, not many people know that Sticks and Specs actually took its inspiration from the show that you were a part of, the institution in British radio called My Music. That was a nice show. It was a... One of the rare shows where you're inclined to talk and anecdotalise or whatever it is, instead of just saying Brahms, Beethoven. That's pretty much what our show's all about. Yeah, yeah. good. The... I watched it. Oh, did you? Yeah. And, and, and... <laughs> did you like it? Did, how did we do? Yes. <laughs> And Dave Hughes, I do apologise for your introduction, but really, we've, I've had so many people say to me, whose idea was it to make Dave sing? Yeah, some really cruel person. I actually was in a band once, though. Yep, yeah, they were called the Hard Marshmallows. <laughs> That's a true story. I, w I wasn't singing in the band. I was there to uh, dance while the song was on and then tell jokes in between the songs. Was it just you dancing? Yes. So you're a go-go dancer who then told jokes. How did you dance? Like, I went like of... this and, yeah, not good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was... Do you about... still do it or are you a gone-gone dancer? I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I actually have to do a fan dance in Guys and Dolls. But oh, really? It's a, well, it's a mink dance. Well, so you have, like, a mink... You hold it over your bits and you... And would you oh, wear like a nude suit no. underneath? Yeah, you're completely nude. Well, I've got I've got undies on and a microphone somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> the mind boggles. <laughs> I didn't know until I started rehearsals. Wow. So they're spraying nudity on you. Well, yeah. I did oh. a fan dance myself. Did you? Well, yes, but what I my point is that I've got a little <laughs> flesh coloured. Leotard, yeah, no. simply with the nipples and pubic hair drawn on with a little texture. <laughs> if you want, it, it looks worse than me in the nude. <laughs> Are you all right, John? I'm still here. That image of me in a nude leotard hasn't it distressed you in any way? I don't want to think about it. <laughs> it might drive me mad. Oh. <laughs> All right, our first game tonight is called Now Your Product. <laughs> your choices tonight are London, Paris, Moscow, oh. and Stockholm. Alan can pick the first topic tonight. No, I think we'll have London. Why not? Miff? We, we'll have to go Paris, I think. Paris it is. We'll start, though, with London. Uh, everyone on your buses, let's play Spicks and Specs. Your first question for one point. According to his 1969 song, if Ralph McTell took you by the hand, where... Yes? Marina. He'd take you through the streets of London. He would lead you through the streets of London. Oh. Well spotted, Marina. One point for something. Yeah. Yeah. Next question for two points. When Phantom of the Opera opened at Her Majesty's Theatre in London in October 1986, who played the Phantom and... Yes. Michael Crawford. Yes. 
And Sarah Brightman. Yes. Oh. Yeah. I heard that not long ago, Andrew Lloyd Webber was in Los Angeles and he met, he was at a party and he met Jay Lerner. And he said to Jay Lerner, after a drink or three, um, why is it you think that some people dislike me, even at first meeting? <laughs> <laughs> and Jay Lerner said, I don't know, but I guess it saves time. <laughs> In the late 19th century, London was home to more than 300 music halls. Have a listen to these three tunes from the period and then name all three. I've got a little cat and I'm very fond of that. You look me, talk about a treat. You look at that from your nappy to your feet. Come, come. Yes. Down at the old bull and bush. Yes, that's one myth. Well, well, well. well. I'd rather have I'd rather have a little cat than a very fine cat, but I'd rather have a bow. Well, well, well. Yeah, well, do you know what? I'll give that to you. It's Daddy wouldn't buy me Daddy a bow. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Daddy and do you know what the middle song is? Daddy wouldn't buy me a bow. Wow, bow, wow. Daddy when did buy you learn these songs? You didn't sing that with the hard marshmallows? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't dance. <laughs> and the middle song? Did anyone pick the middle song of those three? I can't remember what it was. No. Um, anyone on this side? No, no. one? Uh, it was. Cuckles and muscles. No, it was called Any Old Iron. No! Still, of you got course. two points out of that one. Are you really saying, oh, of no, course? No, yeah. Any old iron, any old iron, any, 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 any old iron. Yeah, that yeah. one, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We could start Old Time Musical. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the Spicks and yeah. Spicks Old Time Musical. And have Dave Hughes dance. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to Paris. Your first question for one point. Which Parisian-born violinist played with and co-founded the quintet? <laughs> yes. All I can think of is Stefan Grappelli, but he was... It turns out he was born in Paris. Oh, yes, yeah. that's exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> the rest of that question was, which Parisian-born violinist played with and co-founded the Quintet du Hot Club de France? Oh, well, Stephen well, Grappelli. Well, it's very nice heart. to play when you're winning, isn't it? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Sorry, well, well, I mean, you know, if you think is. you're going to get my you know? now... <laughs> <laughs> French superstar, give me the title of the English version of the song. Yeah, oh God, ah. oh yes. Today when I was young. Yes, and who was the French superstar? Ooh. Charles, Charles Aznavour. Aznavour. Two points, oh, well, well played. Yeah. Three points on the line for your final question. Carnival of the Animals was composed by Sasson in 1886. Name three of the animals specifically mentioned in its 14 movements. Yes. Elephant, uh, tortoise, yes, kangaroo. Yes, there are also lions and hens and cuckoos and swans and a whole bunch of others. Uh, oh. Correct, three points out of three. Yay. Um, now, I read... Yeah, how are you feeling now, Brian? <laughs> <Yeah. prior? laughs> Coming back now. <laughs> now, before we go any further, I, I can see why there is a little bit of tension in the show tonight, because we have uh, a music performer and we have a music critic. Mm. Now, often the two can come to loggerheads. How, Marina, how do you feel about music critics? I often feel like tearing their throats out. But, <gasps> you know, but not this lovely man, of course. But, um, mm. yeah, I've, I've had a little bit of a hard time from critics in the past. I've had Marina Pryor didn't stop the show, but she certainly slowed it down. Oh, oh, oh ouch. That's ouch. ouch. Wow. Cusy? Yeah. yeah, I had one. Um, they said he, he was just a stoned guy standing there, <laughs> which is ridiculous because I moved around. <laughs> <laughs> and you never remember the good ones, you only remember the bad ones. Mm. John, some of the people that you've critiqued over the years include Maria Callas. Yes. You were present at one of her performances? Oh, yes, many. And what sort and of thing did you write about her? Oh, I only wrote praise. I mean, I think she was the greatest single performer mm. I've ever heard. Right. Because even on a bad night, there was perhaps one phrase or something like that that she sang so beautifully that it absolutely pierced your soul. And mm. she was wonderful. There is a lovely thing. Yes. Most of the names that we come across in, in, in 20th century music are people that you know. Well, it's because I'm 80 bloody fine. <laughs> Mm. 
Right, I'm going to throw some names at you, and I just want, I'd, I'd just like to know how well you knew them. Uh -huh. Stravinsky. He came for a week to a summer school I was running. Right. And uh, he was absolutely sweet. He once wrote a ballet for Billy Rose, The Seven Ages of Man, I think it was called, and he wrote Send a Ballet, which is often, quite often performed, beautiful piece. Uh, but it was done out of town, Boston or somewhere, and Dolin sent him a telegram to Stravinsky on the West Coast, said, uh, your ballet, great success, would be even greater if the tune was doubled, the strings and the trumpet. Signed, Dolin. He got a telegram back, signed Stravinsky, said, content with great success. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me about Casals. <laughs> OK. How about this name? Casals. I never met him. <laughs> <laughs> but I do know that when he was 88, it was announced he was going to marry again a girl of 16 from Puerto Rico. And his doctor came and said, look, pal, I want you to think seriously about this. This marriage could be fatal. You are 88 and she is 16. Now, think about it. So he thought about it, and eventually, after three minutes, he took his pipe out of his mouth. He said, well, I look at it like this. If she dies, she dies. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the first round, the scores are... Nif Denise John on five points, Alan Marina Dave one point in front on six points. In this round, teams will have to buzz in and identify the songs being performed live in the studio. Tonight, they will be performed by Stevie Hesketh and his amazing Optigan. Yay! Yay! It's amazing. <laughs> now, before you even start playing, Stevie, can you describe for us exactly what the Optigan is? It's a, an optical organ. It's made in the 70s by Mattel, and it's, it's a kid's toy. And how does it work? It plays uh, optical discs, these guys. Oh. And each wow. one, each one's a different theme or a different style. It's like an old, it's like a sampler. Yeah. You put the record on. Yeah. And then what do you do? I just press the buttons. <laughs> <laughs> and it this plays a different intriguing. bit from the record, though. Is that yes. right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We probably need to see one to demonstrate yes. it. Uh, so, this song uh, will be played in the Big Top marching band oh, style. Oh, that is cool. Of Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. Oh. Uh, the greatest show on earth. Uh, take it away, Stevie. <laughs> Oh, do, 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 do. Yeah, it's a crowded house. Crowded song. house. Oh yes, four seasons in one day. Dave, you yeah. should get a You're all over it. Yeah. I was watching a doco on him the other night. Thank God I don't do much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now this one, I believe, uh, is it this? Is it Nashville Country? We're going to be playing this time. Take it away. Name the song teams. <laughs> style, I believe, is Dixieland Strut. Oh. <laughs> the Baby Elephant Walk. The Baby Elephant Walk. Yes, it is. Well done, Mick. <laughs> now, I believe the final style, Stevie, oh, is Polynesian Village. Oh. Take it away, Steve. Do, 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 
one, two, three, four by five. It's one, two, three, four by five. And Sally Seltman. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Stevie Heskett. After that round of scores, are Nick Denise Joy on seven points. Alan Marina Dave still one point in front. Eight points. I'm going to show each team an album cover with a word or an object blanked out. You have to try and work out what is missing. Uh, Alan, Marina and Dave are first. Here is your first album cover. That is an artist by the name of Swamp Dog oh. with the album title Blank On. So the word that we're missing, he's sitting on that. Indeed. Elephant On! <laughs> <laughs> but it's not enough words. Elephant On would have to be longer. Any idea at all? Rock On. Rock Ride On. on. Jump on. For some reason, I think hog on, and I think he's riding a hog. <laughs> oh. Yeah, hog on. OK, I'm going to go with hog on. All right, let's have a look. Oh! oh ridiculous. Oh, what? Why? Let's uh, we didn't know he was a Why? miniature man. That's just... <laughs> that is, that is, I mean, there have been on. some ridiculous things yeah. on this show, and I'll put my hand up as being one of them, but that is the most stupid thing I've ever seen. Miff, Denise and John... Sorry. This is your first album cover. It's Archie Moore's Blank with Soul and a Beat. The fine print there is learning can be fun for kiddies and grown-ups too. Oh. Mathematics. <sighs> Mathematics. Yeah, he looks Archie. like a maths teacher with that cardigan on, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh. Po poetry, limericks, um, Archie mm. Moore's... Um... Tell you what, I'll give you a hint. It's two words. Oh. oh uh... Times tables. Ooh. Oh, I reckon you might be right. Yeah. Times tables? Yeah, all right. Times tables. Times tables. Right. Let's have a look. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Alan, Marina and Dave, here is your next one. It's Kenny Loggins. This was called Return to Poo Corner. <laughs> P-O-O-H. Oh, I reckon it's his reflection and that's where the poo comes in. <laughs> or is it a reflection of poo? Poo bear? So is he looking into the water? And seeing Winnie. Look, if, if it gives you any hint, and this may or may not, uh, Kenny Loggins had a hit in the 60s with a folk song called House at Pooh Corner. Uh, and then in 1994 released this children's album, Return to Pooh Corner. Right. Oh. The most recent in the series, More Poo from Kenny Loggins, not very successful. <laughs> <laughs> but at least honest. <laughs> I reckon it's... It's, pro it's probably poo, then. So it's a drowned poo bear. No, I reckon it's the face of poo staring back at him, like... Well, that would be really weird. It would be weird, but just remember we saw a man riding a giant rat. <laughs> Do you agree, Dave, that it could be poo in the water? I'm with you all the way. And even further than that. Yeah. <laughs> OK, uh, yeah. we think that it's a reflection of the face of Pooh Bear in the water. OK, let's have a look. Oh. No, it's himself as a child. Oh, oh no! Oh, that's weird. He yeah. looks like he's a ventriloquist doll, isn't he? <laughs> Mr. John, here is your album. It's the blank of PDQ Bark. And we've blanked out what he's holding in his hand, which gives away the answer. Well, there's a lot of, oh, yeah, lot of sausages there. A lot of there. sausage work. <laughs> Salami. <laughs> Kransky, sausage, Polish, the Polish. How dirt. about PDQ reaches Baroque bottom? Oh, <laughs> oh, I very, believe that was yeah. the next album. <laughs> <laughs> the, the aroma, the, the steak, the smell, the, the ham, Strasbourg, the, the, the ham. The ham, ham. The Let's have a look. Ham. Oh! oh, 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 oh it's a so it's a play on words. So good. The worst of PDQ Bark, oh, and it's a gorgeous. worst in it. Oh. <laughs> Scores are dead set even. Alan, Marina, Dave, eight points. Miff, Denise, John, also eight points. Oh. Round four tonight is called You're the Voices. One member of each team will be singing a song for their teammates without using words. To make things tough, though, you will both be doing it at the same time. Now, if a team buzzes in and gets their song incorrect, the other team gets to hear the rest of theirs. It's basically the first team to identify their song gets a point. Uh, Marina, you'll be singing for Alan and Dave, uh, and these are your songs. Uh, Denise, you'll be singing for Miff and John, those are your songs. If you'd like to make your way up to the opposing microphones, please, ladies and gentlemen, Denise Scott and Marina Pryor. <laughs> Good luck, Marina. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say one, two, three, go, and then you go. Oh, 
One, two, three, go. William Tell Overture. It's yes. the William Tell Overture. Yes, it is. And just out of interest, uh, uh, you were doing, sorry, Marina? 1812 Overture. Yes, you were. Uh, song two for the two of you? Da, 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 oh, oh, yes. Sorry, I thought it was Star Wars. No, it's definitely not Star Wars. So, Marina, you can do the rest of yours for your team. It's from The Sound of Music. And la, yes. La, and it's, um... The song sings I call myself Do Ray Me. Yes, it is Do Ray Me. And Denise was doing uh, Over the Rainbow. Oh, the sorry. Of Oz. Very, very nicely, Somewhere. I have to say, from over here. What were you just listening to me for? I was just sort of, you know, She's that good. Tuning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the song three, both players. One, two, three, go. La 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 Sorry, what? Yesterday. It was Yesterday by the Beatles. Oh. Yes, it was. Oh. Oh. Alan, you got the point. And I believe Denise was doing Love Me Tender yeah. by Elvis yeah. Presley. Ooh. Okay. Uh, fourth song. One, two, three, go. Yes. Georgie Girl. It was Georgie Girl by the Seekers. You were doing uh, Green, Green Sleeves. Sleeves. I Final can't remember how my song goes. Oh, too bad, Marina. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, 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 while she's... Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, go. Da, 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 Sounds like Better Be Home Soon by Crowded House. Yes, it was. Denise was doing I Can't Get No Satisfaction by the Rolling Stones. Wait, that's... It was. I'm not quite sure why everybody laughed at that. <laughs> I think there's a word called irony. <laughs> 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 I see. A round of applause, Marina Pryor and Denise Scott. <laughs> at the end of that round, the scores are Myth Denise John on nine points. Alan, Marina, Dave have hit the lead with 12 points. <laughs> it's time for the final countdown. Teams, hands on your buzzers. One point for a correct answer, one point off for a wrong answer. Your questions start now. The three tunes and the crickets were both backing bands for which... Yes? Buddy Holly. Buddy Holly, it was. For which uh, rock and roll pioneer? It was Buddy Holly. One night in Bangkok was a pop hit from which musical? Yes? Chess. It was Chess. Excellent work. Whose 1932 arrangement of Tiger Rag is said to both inspire and terrify pianists around the world? Horror of it? Uh, no, it was Art Tatum. Ah. Ooh. It was even better. <laughs> <laughs> Have a listen to this. Identify the tune. Yes. Oh, baby, baby. It's Britney. Oops, I did it again. Yes, uh, yes it is Oops, I did it again by Britney Spears. Well done, Mick. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm familiar with their work. Which Aussie rock band told us to take a whole life's loneliness, wrap it up in some tenderness... Oh. Cold Chisel indeed. Oh, they came out of the US in the early 80s with their own brand of new wave psychedelic punk. They are the butthole what? Oh. Surfers. Surfers. Are you about to say that, John, I'm assuming? <laughs> <laughs> Which duo were responsible for the songs The Gas Man Cometh, Madeira Madea and the Gnu Song? Flanders and Swan. Indeed. Sonny and Cher's I Got You Babe was famously covered by UB40 uh, and Chrissy. Yes? Uh, um, Labour of Love. Uh, no, the rest of the question was oh, going to be which version went to number one on the Australian charts. It was UB40 and Chrissy Hyde. Oh. Here is your final question. Ooh. Which of the following artists has sold the most records over their career? Johnny Cash, Eddie Money, Peter Buck or 50 Cent? Yes. 50 Cent sold a fair few million. I'll go with that. It was Johnny Cash. Of course oh. it was Johnny Cash. <laughs> At the end of the show, the final scores were oh. Miff, Denise and John ended up on 12 points and so did Alan, Marina and Dave. Oh. Also, oh. Yes. We do have a tiebreaker question. <laughs> uh, the first team to answer it correctly will win the show. If you get it wrong, though, all the clues will go to the other side. Who am I? Born in North Texas in 1936... I started my first band, The Wink Westerners, at age 13. I signed to Sun Records and had a hit with Ooby Dooby in 1956. 
1963, I headlined a tour with the Beatles as my support act. I tragically lost my wife in a motorbike accident and two of my sons in a house fire. Roy Orbison. Yes, it's Roy Orbison! <laughs> Hughes, Denise Scott, and John Amos. Okay. And of course, our two team captains, Alan Brow and Mick Warhurst. We leave you tonight with a special performance from Stevie Hesketh as he pushes his amazing toy Optagon to the max with a funkadelic take on Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> Thanks for watching Spicks and Specs. My name's Adam Hills. Good night, Australia.